I mean, also, I want to be clear, the uh, opioid task force is continuing to meet. We met uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we'll be meeting again in the future to continue on this issue. But these are preliminary recommendations uh, that uh, Lieutenant Governor Claybish and I, as well as consultation with uh, the committee, uh, have developed. Um, you know, and, and uh, some have asked, you know, are you really making a difference? Is, is this, uh, you know, making a dent in the problem? And I think one of the biggest successes we can point to so far has been the uh, the Control Substance Board report uh, over the last two quarters from of, uh, of 16 to 50, from 15 to 16, showing that the number of prescriptions uh, for opioids are, is declining. The fourth, third quarter was 8 million fewer doses than, than 15, and the fourth quarter was 11 million fewer doses uh, than 16. And that's before the prescription drug monitoring program go, goes live. It's amazing. It is, it is amazing, and, and we, unlike some other states, we haven't been telling doctors what they can and should prescribe. We are actually just giving them some tools uh, to be able to have a better understanding of what their patients' uh, uh, prescribing habits are. So the bills before us today uh, are continuing on that kind of broad approach in, in dealing with the, uh, the issue. Uh, we've uh, expanded the access to Narcan or Naloxone, a drug that reverses the impact of the overdose over the last couple sessions. This actually came to, the request came to us from uh, our schools. Uh, oftentimes schools, you can't even give a student a, a prescription or a, a Tylenol uh, nowadays without having some liability concerns. So this provides immunity from liability concerns for schools that are uh, carrying and administering naloxone. Uh, a, a bill uh, amendment that actually came from a Democrat actually expands it uh, to not just our, our public schools, but also our universities. We even went further and said, you know, all private uh, universities, all private schools will have that same immunity. The objective here is to save a life and not worry about litigation. This is a safe drug. There's been no immediate impacts of, uh, you know, if you, if, if you actually uh, give this by mistake, there's no negative consequences. So erring on the side of caution is actually uh, a very appropriate in this case. Uh, in addition, we're also uh, continuing our commitment to treatment and diversion programs. You know, in car simple incarceration uh, rates, the recidivism is uh, through the roof when it comes to drug crimes. Um, sim simple treatment, the recidivism or long-term recovery uh, rates are not as high, about 30%. With our treatment and diversion programs, we're seeing about 60% of people that are in long-term recovery. So this is continuing our investment in what makes sense not only for that person, but also from a taxpayer standpoint, these programs cost a fraction of what incarceration does. Um, in addition, we're also, uh, we spent a lot of money, we haven't thrown a, uh, our money at this problem, we're actually doing it, I think, in a, in a comprehensive approach that makes sense, but we do spend dollars on, on treatment in our state and on other, other expenses related to it. One of the issues is uh, when a person goes through uh, treatment, Oftentimes, a younger person will go right back to the same environment they came from. They're going back to the, the school, right, that they came from. So same friends, same pressures that they had before. Uh, there has been a successful uh, uh, treatment program in other states called a recovery school, uh, where you're, you're continuing the post-treatment services, uh, counseling, et cetera, as well as also um, you are uh, surrounding yourself with other, other people that are in, 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 in recovery, and that proves to be beneficial. So. Uh, we are allowing for a RFP for a charter school, which would be a, with a just state funding, uh, to uh, co come put a bid in and uh, provide uh, continued services and the, the uh, education that the, the student needs to, you know, again, assist them in long-term recovery uh, to become, uh, hopefully, long-term uh, tax-paying citizens of our, of our state that is our, in, in, uh, in recovery, and that is our goal. Uh, also, we are expanding a successful provision we had a couple uh, sessions ago dealing with treatment in rural and underserved areas. So if you're a person who's, who's in active addiction and you want to get clean, there's, there's certain barriers. One of the biggest barriers is actually having treatment available to you, especially if you live in a rural area. So that's why we, we funded these centers uh, two uh, sessions ago. Uh, those centers are up and functioning in, uh, in one in Marinette County that serves uh, that part of the state, Marinette, Ocano, Florence counties. I actually met with them recently. Uh, they actually are seeing people come from as far away as West Bend. They more than doubled the number of people they expected to treat the first year. Uh, the other two centers are in uh, Minocqua, serving the Northwoods, and one up in Ashland, far, uh, serving the far northern part of the state. Uh, this actually will expand that option or that availability uh, to two to three more centers and also is rever or, um, 
removing the provision that says rural, just going to simply say underserved areas. We've had people come forward from, from Waukesha and other more populated areas saying that they have interest in applying for these, these grants. And finally, um, there's nine bills, I'm not going to talk about all of them, but you know, we, we have focused on uh, harm reduction, helping people that are currently in, in the cycle of, um, of addiction. We've worked on um, providing treatment. We've, we've tried to give doctors tools to uh, identify people who might be drug seeking. We haven't done a lot on law enforcement and we do know that this is a piece of it. So we're providing four additional uh, agents for the Department of Justice to focus on uh, the drug trafficking that is coming into our state. Um, you know, as, as a tool for them to, to battle this, this problem as well. I'm proud of where we're at. I'm proud of the fact that uh, this has been very bipartisan. Uh, uh, there are seven amendments on these bills that are for us, before us today. Three of them are going to come from Democrats. I believe there's going to be a fourth one uh, offered on the floor from Democrats that we're going to accept. This is not a Republican-only issue. It's a, uh, when we hear from families, nobody tells us how they vote. So we're going to deal with this in, in a uh, bipartisan uh, uh, position uh, as much as we possibly can.